Speaking of job, Dalton, how does it feel to be working again? Uh, it'd, be, it'd be better once we can open properly. Uh, we're busy today, and we're busy the first day. Yeah. And it's just, every other day has been... Um, a bit wank. So, yeah, a bit wank. Fair. I mean... Very quiet. I have been to the pub a few times since they've reopened. Brought up the winter jackets on April, which I thought I'd never have to do. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But it seems as though everyone's moods are kind of lifting because of it, I think is a fair thing to say. Yeah. Morale's very high. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely affects like a whole community. It's just suddenly brought together by being able to socialize again. And like, I know for today, I can already feel the sunburn on the back of my neck. I'm oh, yeah, on, on my face. <laughs> uh, not like fully been up there now. Oh, it has been 22 degrees in Manchester today. Really, 22 degrees. Yeah, yeah it hit close to that over here as well. Like, we had a couple that. of nice days this week. We had like 15, 16 for for Oslo, which is pretty nice. But mm-hmm. I miss being back in 22 degree weather. It was really good as well because we were on a video call to our friend in London, and it, for once. Miraculously, it was warmer in Manchester than it was in London. But we took full Somehow. advantage of that. I bet you did, I bet you did. Yeah. I think it was just because it, it was very humid. <laughs> like, when it's warm, it's warm <laughs> in Manchester. Uh, yeah, I guess that's like the thing here. Like, it's not humid, but it's just like the sun beats down, but it's still like cool, like cold air. Yeah. If you know what I mean? Yeah. So you get you get the effects of like the sun and like the sun burning, but it's actually really cold still. So it's like not nice to be outside. <laughs> Inside it's fine, like coming through the windows, if you keep your windows closed, it's like warm and hot. The yeah. moment you step outside and you open your door, you get like hit with this like cold blast of air. Yeah. I mean that's what you get for living in Norway, so Yeah, that's true. That's I mean the, true. these weak Norwegians getting s- trapped inside by a bee. Ben, you know, elaborate on that? No, no, we're, we're not we're not gonna go over that story, but I was held hostage by a bee, and I think that's that's all everyone needs to know. You know, those those cute, cuddly winged beings that everyone in the UK loves. But if you can send me a video of you cuddling a bee, then I will I will stand down and say that I was being a pussy, but <laughs> I, this bee would look scary. You do, and, um, you do know I what the mascot of Manchester is, right? <laughs> it is a bee. Don't tell me. Okay. <laughs> well, you have to hug a real one, not a fake one. <laughs> Those are not in the rules. Well, I made them now. Made them now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, have you had any Karens, Dalton, going back to work so far? Any difficult customers? Not that I've dealt with, I don't think. I haven't dealt with anyone particularly dickish. I don't know about anyone else at work. I don't think I have. Maybe I have, was I don't it a know. Bit, was it a bit rowdy when you were back? Like, people haven't been in the pub for a while, maybe not had so many drinks? Um, Not in ours, really. Was, especially the first day when we opened, it was, like, all bookings basically and you'd get like an hour and a half time slot so there's not enough time for people to get drunk and get rowdy unless they've already been like five other places when they get to us but they hadn't yeah so well, i guess that's more than tough. yeah so i heard from yeah. a lot of people that they were just doing like kind of bar crawls because of the hour yeah. and a half rule that everyone had in place yeah i just kind of planned it out that they were in between the different places at different times yeah. It's a smart way of doing it. Yeah. Whereas, like, today for me, we queued, we got very lucky. So, by the time our house viewing had finished, we got into town only to queue like 15 minutes to get into one of the main pubs in Manchester. Only 15 or, minutes. That's or into the outdoor yeah. area. Well, yeah. Like, 20 minutes after, we saw people queuing for maybe at least an hour. So, we got very oh, lucky with it. You timed it right, yeah. Yeah, we timed it to perfection. And, like, our mates joined us as well, so we were going to meet at, like, four, but then me and David were just like, do we just want to go for lunch and get the seats? 
the smartest thing that might have ever come out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're waiting around an hour, like you might as well just pop to the shops and go and sit in the park or something with a beer mm-hmm. because it's just not worth it. Like as much as you've missed it for the past year, I don't think it's worth sitting around for an hour waiting for a oh, drink. Oh, a pulled pint is so much better than some oh, I can so though. Good. I know, I know it is, but to sit around waiting for an hour just to be able to actually sit in the pub for an hour itself is. I don't know if it's worth it. In my head, it is. In my head, it definitely is as well. But I can definitely see where you're coming from. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, on a side note, my CPU loves the podcast. It's saying like 6% idling. <laughs> when I'm running anything like Warzone, it idles like 40% and cries at me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just something time I've for, noticed. Time for upgrades. Time for upgrades. Yeah, I mean, I bought the PC less than eight months ago, so it should definitely not be time for upgrades. But still, yeah. I mean, speaking of upgrades, I think we should uh, get into the the main topic of of tonight, which is uh, some big news that's happened over the past week. I went definitely home for a week. Don't... <laughs> definitely a lot, of, a lot of stipulation and anger around like many many communities not just like here in the uk but yeah i'm sure dalton's got a lot to say about it oh i do i've got a lot of a lot of stuff here that's ready to be talked you've been, about. been researching haven't you i have been so it's more noting down things that have happened so we can yeah. use his talking points he's, he's been a, excited for so, like the first time on one of these podcasts he has like the main say in one of these things, I think, is fair to say. Yeah. We, we could let him ramble on. Yeah. Yeah. So, the Super League. I don't know if, Ben, you know too much about this. Or you know, really... any of like I've, our I've, American I've bands or anything outside of... Yeah. Well, you say that, it's actually got quite a lot to do with American people at the same time. It's an American so it company that's... That. Uh... Well, yeah, it was American well, banking associations yeah. and everything that have funded, Not just that, but funded it, basically. The like, owners like, of the primarily. clubs who are American and and the type yeah, there's of, a like, lot of format other... we're trying to yeah. get into as well. Yeah, so I have the proposed format uh, here. So what they proposed when they released it Sunday night was that there's going to be 20 participating clubs annually. So there's a competition that's going to happen every year. The 12 founding clubs, obviously, is was released. Chelsea, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Spurs, Barca, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, AC Milan, Inter Milan, and Juventus. Um, then we had, the, in the end, was, you know, they were planning to get three more founding clubs along with them. Mm-hmm. to basically, And they were going to be guaranteed to be in this competition every year. They no matter what happened. They planned to be PSG, Bayern, and Dortmund. Dortmund. Yeah. yeah. But they all pulled out. Um, but well, no, they didn't even accept. They were just like, fuck off. Because yeah. it's like the main part of running those clubs is the fans. Like, especially with Dortmund, 50% of the club's shares of like the shares of the club that run the club are the fans. And be- 50% of it are executives and all sorts of businesses. I believe for German clubs, it's 51%. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they, they have the majority shareholding in, yeah. in the clubs. Um, so then there'll be. Obviously, because it's 20 clubs, the 15 founding clubs, there'd be five clubs that qualify on domestic performance, which I don't know how the hell they'd figure that out. Um, considering there's, what, well, seven top European leagues across Europe. Mm. Um, there are going to be midweek fixtures with clubs still competing domestically, which is what they plan it to be. Um, with an August start each year of two groups of 10, and then eight, eight teams would progress from these two groups to go into quarterfinals with a, basically a final played in May. So basically exactly the same time frame of the Champions League. So just trying to completely replace the Champions League, basically. Um, so what's your two opinions on that? Just hearing that. I'll let like when that was first released. Yeah, when it was first released or just what? listening about yeah. it was. When, when it first released, so I, I saw it on Twitter and... You can just imagine because Twitter is one of those places that people go ham. Like they oh, they say whatever place, they want. Yeah. They, it's very toxic, and the amount of like outrage that I saw from it immediately <clears> was <throat> was insane. And I was like, this can't be happening. Like, there's no way that they've just selected these few teams um, without like you know there was no sort of like 
discussion about it or like people saying should we set up this league it was kind of just they came out like bam we're setting up this league we plan to plan to start it and they're not planning involving any other clubs they're just choosing the elite and i'm like well, how firstly how have they decided who's part of this super league because no offense but you got teams like tottenham they're all over the place sometimes they're not always in the top four top five so who who decided? Ah, yeah, we'll get Tottenham in there. They'll they'll be part of the Super League. So I was a little bit confused and shocked at that. At the same time, I was like yeah. trying to figure out, okay, is it going to be beneficial for the sport? Like you see a lot of people with outrage on on social media, but is that just because they're annoyed their own team didn't get picked? It's like you know, there's always going to be two sides to it until you yeah. delve deeper into well, exactly into the reasons yeah. behind it. So. I get, yeah, I completely understand where you're coming from on that part. And it's, I mainly had the same opinion of like looking outside the Premier League of why Inter Milan and AC Milan have been put into it. Neither done have won in Europe anything in, in a while. Yeah, yeah in, in the last time. at least ten years, they haven't done. They haven't even barely even hit the quarterfinals or semi-finals of tournaments. Those two, like they've done absolutely nothing, and they're the, like some of the main teams in it. And I'm just sort of like, it just doesn't make sense. Um. Like, I fully get that Spurs shouldn't be in it. Like, we'd be able to hold our own in the tournament, don't get me wrong. But we shouldn't be in it on yeah, merits yeah. of a founding club. We're in there on merits of a founding club because we're a club with money to begin with. Yeah, exactly. And that's what this whole Super League is about, really. It's not about, you know fans it's not about anything like that it's about money and that's why so many people had a problem mm -hmm. with it and um, just to fight back against all these points in the comments the only team in the super league that we have lost to in the past four years like is us on aggregate is yeah chelsea on aggregate we've beaten liverpool on score we've beaten city on score we've beaten arsenal on score we've beaten whichever one is the other english team that I've not mentioned. There's another one. United. Man City. We beat United. United score. Uh, we we've not played any of the the two Milan teams because they haven't been. Anywhere oh no, no wait, no wait. Yeah, <laughs> we beat we beat the Milan teams and beat them in the uh group stages last year in the Champions League. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, we sla we, Milan, we slapped it? Juventus in the Champions League two seasons ago. Yeah. Sorry, that's pretty much everyone. To be honest. Spurs ran over. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we're going to when this was released. So shortly after the proposed format was released, literally, I think it was probably not even an hour later, you had Andrea Agnelli, the president of Juventus, resigning from his ECB chairman role to become the vice president of this Super League. And the same did uh, Ed Woodward as well, with any of his associations with any of the footballing associations in England. And he became vice president of it as well. And obviously, Andrea Agnelli didn't, it caused a stir up worldwide, but the Ed Woodward one, who's, mm -hmm. you know, Manchester United chairman, yep. it changed the game completely in how English fans reacted to this, and especially Man United fans. And we obviously saw if. You living under a rock, you wouldn't have seen this, but you everyone saw Gary Neville's reaction to this on Sunday night when the, with the football and everything. Um, which I haven't got quotes of, or whatever, but we, we get the, the gist of the, the fact that Gary Neville's a, he's out and out Man United and he wasn't very happy, let's just say that. The gist of it um, was it's a disgrace to the name of football, it just ruins yeah, the sport. Yeah. I mean, it, it took away from what it started as, as a sport and what it meant to so many people. Like yeah. it, for, to some people, football is just football. Like it, it's a sport, it's whatever. But to others, it symbolizes, you know, community, how like what you grew up with. There's just so many things to it exactly. that isn't money and and being a sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's probably it's probably what affected so many people. Yeah. Um. We also found out. I think it was either Sunday night, or Monday morning. That, um. It wasn't. It, Basically, Sky had a source from inside the committee or the, the committee of one of the Premier League teams. They didn't name names or anything like that because the guy wanted to name, rename, remain anonymous because he didn't want to get sacked, basically. He didn't want his job to go. But he openly said that he was against the Super League. So before anyone else had spoken out against it, yeah, he was the first person to come out and say that he was against it. 
And he said there was a lot of other chairmen that and like people in the committees of these football clubs that were against it, but they just didn't have the driving force and the power behind them to stop it. They just, they're just not in a position to yeah. to say say no really. Um, and he also said that apparently Man City and Chelsea were two teams that were reluctant to actually get involved in the first place, and they mm-hmm. wanted to try and stay away from it. Um, mm-hmm. But then ended up getting basically drawn in by the money aspect of it, really. Um, it was the money aspect and the fact that they didn't want to be yeah. in a league without that competition. Yeah, they felt I like if the they words... stayed in the Premier League and whatever, they didn't really feel like there would be any competition for them. Basically, it would just be a league between them two every year. Yeah. Which is outrageous, but considering you know West Ham and Leicester are in the top four at the moment. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Obviously, no one's competing with Man City, but Leicester, I think, are third, aren't they? Man United second, and then West Ham. I think West Ham are below us now, actually. I think West Ham are fifth, and we're fourth. Yeah. Um, I have... But we're on the same points. <laughs> I've, I've come to the acceptance that is very likely Spurs aren't going to get top four this season. And the I, other... Yeah, I don't think you or Liverpool yeah, will. Probably not. I don't think Liverpool will either, yeah. I think yeah. Liverpool's day is done for the time being of being the top of Europe. If you want to go even further than that, Arsenal probably won't get Europa. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think they'll get Europa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, moving on quickly, so we don't stay on for this too long. So, Monday, um, obviously, the all the footballing committees around the world, you had UEFA, FIFA, you had the FA all basically standing together against this Super League. You had Boris Johnson come out saying everything in his power and government he will do to stop this Super League going ahead and actually help the committees try and stop it. Uh, you had Prince, Prince William releasing a statement as president of the FA saying that he's going to do everything in his power to stop this from happening as well. Um, which is quite a, you know, a big thing to have the Prince of England saying, yeah, we're not going to let this happen. Yeah. Um, you know, it sort of shows that they really have done something wrong now. Because um, he's not just doing it as his job. He, we all know that Prince William's a lover of football. He's been a football fan since a kid. He's Aston Villa fan since he was a kid and all this sort of thing. He's a proper grassroots football fan. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's In football terms of fans, he is, you know, one of us in a way. Because he loves the game just as much as any of us do. Um, yeah. And there's no doubt that he was going to support the fans' aspect of it. Um, Some people saw this um, European Super League as the clubs basically tarnishing the name of uh, Prince Philip because he was so heavily involved in English football, in essence. Really? You think that was... From 50s to the 70s, like he was a massive part of it. He was... Mm chairman of the FA for a while, he was the commissioner of some of the FA or what, what was the FA Cup back then for two years Yeah, he literally has a seat for FA Cup games in Wembley it's Like that I think is going to be retired for him, I heard but I'm not sure if that's true um, but he is a massive part and a lot of English fans yeah. especially thought Cool, a week after yeah. the dude bites it. Yeah. Um. So, obviously this was all happening during the day. The Boris Johnson thing, Prince William and blah blah blah, sort of speaking out against it. And then it came to the point of the Monday Night Football show for the Premier League on Monday, obviously. Um, and it's where uh, it was Liverpool Leeds, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And yeah. It was the first time we've seen any sort of resistance from the fans because there was protests outside the stadium for the first time of Leeds and Liverpool fans turning up at Leeds Stadium uh, protesting against the Super League. It was then that it was released because uh, Jurgen Klopp got asked about it in an interview and in 2019 he got asked about it in an interview and he said he hopes it doesn't happen. Um, then obviously he got asked the same question now about it happening and he still openly said that he was against it and he is a manager of one of the clubs that's going into this league yeah. at this point. Yep. And that sort of showed that there was real miscommunication going on. And that was the first time that we've seen that yeah. no nobody had been asked about this, whether they wanted to or not. It was it, it just goes purely just the owners. Of like, who's in position and who's in power? Because 
Klopp can stand there as like the manager of the club and say that I don't want to go into it, but then the person standing right at the top with all the money says, "Well, we're doing it anyway. Yeah, it's not your exactly. choice." He's just there to run the team and yeah. run the club. Yeah, where I mean, it is, what shirt they wear is not up to him. Yeah, another clear um, example. Um, I don't mean to bring this back to Spurs, but there's heavy speculation that Mourinho's oh, yeah, sacking is yeah. heavily due to. Yeah, I wouldn't the be European Super League, so. like he's oh, been yeah, actively was... against it since 2015. Yeah, and there was reports that weren't confirmed by anybody that he refused to lead the tra- team out on Monday morning to training mm-hmm. in protest of the Super League, and that's apparently why he got sacked and, and why he got told to leave there. And there. I believe it was Son and I don't want to say Bale, maybe Reguilon had come out on the game after the when we beat Southampton. They came out in the interviews afterwards in stuff that has since been redacted, saying yeah, he didn't come out. He, there was literally a row with the players, between Mourinho and the players. And the players mm. knew that it wasn't aimed at them, it was aimed at the club. Because yeah. uh, Mourinho knew he was on his way out, because yeah. he's actually, I mean, he's, no, he's, he said yeah. in the past that like, he wouldn't coach a team that was part of the Super League. Yeah. And I think he was probably on his way out anyway, just because of his first performances. Um, oh yeah, 57-1 rate. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, on this same Monday Night Football show, of when Jürgen Klopp said, came out and spoke out against it, in the post-match interviews, you had James Milner, Patrick mm-hmm. Bamford, and Marcelo Bielsa, so Liverpool manager, Leeds striker, uh, Liverpool, Leeds, man- Leeds manager, Liverpool, Leeds striker, and James Milner, obviously, formerly at Man City. Liverpool has been... Ed- been around for God knows how long. Standing Liverpool yeah. captain as well at the moment. Standing right? Liverpool captain, yeah. Um, he came out, They all three of them came out and spoke against the Super League. Um, which, again, just shows how much nobody was consulted about this at any of the clubs. Um, nobody knew about it either, apart from the people at the top, the people, money-grabbing bastards, as I like to call them. Um, basically. Uh, and on during the whole process of this program being on the game and everything, there was talks about should the big six be banned from competitions such as Champions League. So should Chelsea and Man United, who are still and Man City, who are still part of the European competitions at this point, be banned from the Champions League and Europa League mm-hmm. uh, because of this? They're basically planning to leave it anyway. So why should they have the chance to win it? Uh, yeah. Along with Arsenal as well, obviously as well. Um, um, there was a chart somewhere which pretty much showed if the bands did go ahead in that format, Sh- is it Shakhtar Donetsk would win the Champions League on merits, I think? Well, no, it'd probably be PSG. Surely. Uh, b- b- Semi final is PSG. Oh, yeah. Real Madrid, Chelsea, and Man City, aren't The they? final would be PSG against Shakhtar Donetsk. <laughs> yeah. Which I went to um, Pretty good game to be honest. I would have four. Yeah. Shut the Donetsk. Don't go down without a fight. Um, there's also talks of um, so international players at these clubs not being able to being, so, yeah. not being able to play internationally and not being able to play in the Euros, which is um, I think in the end probably a main turning point for the clubs thinking this may not be a good idea, um, mm-hmm. because you know they'll lose all those players. Basically, I mean, because uh, they don't of, want to not play international football. Yeah, out of the top six, the only player that I could possibly even consider that wouldn't leave because of that rule is maybe Mares. Yeah, yeah, because he's not really going to do much internationally anyway. Yeah. Cause it's just cause mainly because of the country he's from, isn't exactly a massive country in Algeria. It's not a they're never known to and make an impact anywhere. So they said that the rule of uh, the bans would be mitigated for anyone that was on loan where the contract started before the contract was signed. Yeah. And all the new players would have to sign new contracts for being part of the Super League, I think, as well. Yeah. UEFA said. So... Yeah. No one was tied in, but it basically created this thing of a whole team will be shipped out and a new team will be shipped in of players that were really subpar. And it basically would create a championship of Europe. (laughs) Yeah. 
<clears throat> and then you'd have all the big players being at teams like West Ham and Leicester, who are top of those domestic leagues in the end. Yeah. And obviously, a lot of them probably going to the likes of PSG, Dortmund, and Bayern Munich because they are the top European clubs left who aren't part mm-hmm. of the Super League. Mm. Um, Which obviously fair play yeah. to the French and German league, like yeah, they deserve a little well, bit more competition. Well, yeah, and fair play to them for backing the football associations across Europe during this whole thing as well because for not they're being not involved. First, it's not the, like they joined and left it's like they said yeah, no yeah. To the only no club initially. that yeah. I can say fucking fair play to PSG because the, both the German teams even if the club said yes it wouldn't have gone through because it's yeah, 51% because fans fan owned no. yeah. but PSG have straight just said no Yeah. well no PSG were considering I was reading somewhere before they, I can imagine um, they probably would. would. Yeah, they could but consider it because... sense in the end. But you can see from PSG's viewpoint that their whole opposition would be wiped out in one foul swoop if they didn't join. Yeah. I mean, they're already in the Champions League semi finals with all those teams being in the Champions League. Imagine what it would be like without them in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. You know? Like. They are rising to the top with, well. Dude. Who wouldn't with the, the strike se- force of the, Neymar and Mbappe? The but... semi finals would be what? Fucking Bunjan Gladbach, Leicester, PSG. Yeah. Well, Napoli, but... maybe? Well, yeah. Um, obviously, on Monday night, we had Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville doing their whole 40 minute segment on the whole Super League as well. Obviously, they're full on against it. Um, as were most of the, pretty much all the fans. There's a very minute group of people that are actually for it, which, you know, I don't get. Um, yeah. There's something wrong in their brains if they think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, going to Tuesday, and this is probably the biggest turning point of this whole thing. Um, so... On Tuesday morning, we had the Premier League meeting of the 14 other clubs that weren't obviously involved in the Super League, and it was basically them deciding where they go with this. Yeah. With the and there was obviously the FA meeting and all this sort of thing. And, and this was the day that Seraphin came out and said, the president of the FA, if the Premier League clubs want to leave now, I'm holding out an olive branch to you. If you come back, all is forgiven. We can move on. Mm-hmm. And that was his. Yep. Basically, proposed this, to this is not just Premier the, League clubs. This is after she'd had the meeting with Boris Johnson and Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Uh, top people as well. And then there was yeah. the captains' meeting, wasn't there? Yeah. Following yeah. that. Yeah. So in the Premier League meeting, they basically the other prim- Premier League clubs came out and said that they want the so-called Big Six um, to seize all involvement and just get out of it because you know it's going to ruin the English game that we all love. Um, it was also to that in that afternoon when Pep Guardiola had his pre-match press conference for the Wednesday night game for Man City that he admitted that he had no idea this was going on as well and he was fully against it. So you have the manager of Man City now going up against it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you had um, the Chelsea game uh, which where everything changed basically. Um, so there's a huge protest outside Stamford Bridge before the game and it stopped the buses getting through and it delayed the game and everything um, and they only really dispersed once Pear Check went outside and said to the fans can we you know, just let the game go on so I think we were still on football to progress mm-hmm. um, during all these protests were going on the announcement was made that Chelsea were going to leave the Super League yeah. it was at this point Chelsea decided they were going to leave and it was the first club to do it uh, it wasn't surprising for a lot of people because obviously there was the leak that they were one of the clubs that were reluctant to leave. Was it not City first and then nope. after that? No, it was Chelsea that announced their intentions so... to leave first. Oh, okay. Oh, their intentions then, to leave, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, they basically said they were going to, but they've not started the legal procedures yet. And then it was literally 15 minutes after Chelsea announced it that Man City announced it as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, and then Man City at the end of the Chelsea game announced that they are starting the legal proceedings of getting out of the Super League, basically. Then I believe it was Arsenal, Liverpool, Yeah, United, everyone else followed it. And then the last, yeah. which 
unsurprisingly to anyone. The Spurs. Was, yeah, the Spurs, because Daniel Levy's a bastard. Um, no offence. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's a dick. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's, still the, yeah, the, he's still the only chairman slash owner to not apologise for this as well, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, from the English clubs. Yep. Every other English club owner slash chairman has apologised for it. Daniel Levy, nothing. Um, which sort of shows where his mind's at. Even though the level um, ball one was very hard past. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was midway through the Chelsea game as well that Ed Woodward announced that he would be leaving Manchester United at the end of the calendar year. Which... And he stepped down his positions from UEFA as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which many people predicted and many people probably thought that this is just the Glazers throwing him under the bus, mm-hmm. trying to get out of it themselves, trying to get out of the hate themselves, saying it was his fault. He's leaving now, um, which won't have work at all. And it hasn't worked, as proven by yesterday, uh, which we'll get onto it uh, in just a second. Um, it was also so Wednesday morning. If we move on to that, uh, you had AC Milan, Inter Milan, and Atletico Madrid follow the English teams and back out. Yep. So it left three teams. It just left Juventus, Real, and Barca as part of it. Bear in mind, um, before the Italian le- uh, clubs left, literally half of the founding teams had left at that point. Yeah. I think there, there was 12 founding teams, right? And yeah, six of them being English. To... Yeah. 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 Three being um, Spanish, three Italian. So, yeah. And then there was the apolo- further apologies going on. So, John Henry released his um, apology to the fans in an open letter, the Liverpool owner, um, and so did the Glazers as well. Although the Glazers one was not received well at all because, nope. you know, they are. The Glazers. They are. Yeah, the Glazers. Uh, they've been hated by Manchester United for years, and this is just sort of the final straw that broke the camel's back in that aspect uh, with the Glazers. Uh, it got on to the press conferences by two certain people. One of them being Andrea Agnelli from Juventus, the chairman, <laughs> which um, it's not as bad as the other one. No. Um, he basically came out and said that he, he admitted that it may have not been the right idea to announce it now, but he still feels like the Super League is a good idea. He's just not going to pursue it at the moment. That's mm-hmm. basically what he said. Uh, he said it won't be able to go ahead without the English teams. So there's no point in going forward with it. But then uh, Florentino Perez, the Real Madrid chairman, decided to step up to the bat and do his press call or talk to the press, which is where everything changed because he basically slewed everyone, uh, said he's never going to back down, said that he wants to keep going with the proceedings of trying to get the Super League up in order and get it going. He just said it's on standby for now. Um, He said it still exists and it will still happen. Um, he said that he didn't know, he didn't say who, but he said one of the clubs, one of the English clubs, was always reluctant to join, and he said that their reluctance was contagious, which is why the rest of them joined, not because they didn't see sense. Uh, he just said that they basically just got scared and left. Basically, uh, they still apparently they still want to pursue it, which I don't think is true at all. Uh, I spoke could on the... see fit that that being either United or Spurs. Yeah. Um, so he said as well that he spoke on the, basically the protests outside Chelsea's game on Tuesday night, which caused this whole chain of events to happen, basically, of teams leaving. Um, and he said that there was only 40 Chelsea fans at this pro- pro- protest when there was hundreds, if not thousands, of Chelsea fans at the protest. Uh, he claims to have known the person who orchestrated this protest, basically saying it's not a real protest, it was orchestrated to try and make him fail uh, by someone. He didn't give any evidence, and he said he's not going to give any evidence. He said that he just knows. Uh, so, basically speaking, a bunch of bullshit. Um, he then went on to say that the biggest signings in the world would not be possible without the Super League, without their money. Uh, he said the likes of Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappe, to be precise, will never be able to move clubs because no one will be able to afford them uh, because of this without the Super League, which is a bunch of bollocks, in my mm-hmm. opinion. I think any club can afford them who's got a lot enough money, um, as proven, proven by the Neymar transfer to PSG from Barcelona. 
if they've got enough money, it will happen. Or the um, Mbappe transfer from, was it Monaco? Yeah. Monaco, it's PSG. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, he, he basically just carried on slewing everyone that decided to pull out of the Super League and yeah. basically burning all his ties with anyone else across Europe, which means he's on his own now, which is what led to yesterday Juventus leaving um, the Super League proposal. <laughs> um, there was the protests outside many United training grounds trying to get the Glazers out of the um, out of the club, which only stopped because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came out and said to them, you know, you need to stop. Like, you can pursue this fight a different way. You don't need to keep protesting, which is what yeah, they did. Protesting's only going to do so much. So much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he said you can pursue it in a different way, in his words, basically. Um, there was also yesterday that La Liga and Serie A came out and said that they were not going to punish the teams that decided to get involved in this, which I understand. The Premier League hasn't understand. said anything as of yet. Well, yeah, they're not. They haven't announced. They've announced there's going to be punishment for the Premier League clubs, but they haven't announced what the punishment yeah. is going to be. Um, I think it's going to be. They don't. Point deduction. Going to be something like a fine, or well, I don't know if it's going to be point deduction. Well, they d- yeah. In fact, that it's not the team themselves. Like the exactly. the team that's done this is the people with the money. Okay, you're saying yeah. this, but I've I've researched something for you, so. Tell me what these clubs have in common. Sheffield Wednesday, Wigan, Macclesfield Town, Bolton, Bury, Birmingham, Brentford, Rotherham, Coventry, Wimbledon, Coventry again, Portsmouth, Aldershot, Portsmouth, and Port Vale in the past 10 years. So they've all been in the Premier League, I don't know. No, they've Probably all not in, not had, in the past 10 years. They've no. all had point deductions from the English leagues because of stuff that has nothing to do with the team. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see it. Yeah. Why leave the big six out of that just because they have money? I don't think it's on the fact of that. I think. Well, I can under yeah. I can understand your point of where you're coming from. Yeah. But I guess this... we'll just see what they do. This is. But a... I think there will be a financial yeah penalty involved with it. With, well, I know with the Sheffield Wednesday one, because that was only a few years ago that it happened. Because obviously my dad's a Sheffield Wednesday fan and my brother is. The Sheffield um, Wednesday was still ongoing. It's like to this Yeah, it's still day. ongoing. Yeah. Um, it's stuff that's public knowledge. So the team does know about it and it's, it's stuff where it's involved the club of some sorts. Mm-hmm. The Super League really hasn't involved the clubs per se. It's literally just been the owners. That have been acting behind everyone else's back, which is why they're not trying to go down this route in that aspect. Because with point deductions, it's been because the club has done something, so it's been a shared decision by people at the club, um, which is definitely what happened in the Sheffield Wednesday instance. It was a lot of people that did stuff wrong, it wasn't just one person that's decided, you know what, I could make a bit of money here. Which is what the Super League was basically, and all the chairman and donors, and that's why I think they're not pursuing this road. If I, I don't think it's right if they do, because then they pan- they're punishing the fans basically that yeah. way when it's not their fault. Yeah. If I recall correctly, the Sheffield Wednesday one was financial fair play. Yes. Because of the stadium, I want to say. Yeah, it was something to do with embezzling money somehow. Um, yeah. See, I that believe. goes beyond just the owner there like that's yeah more people need to be involved in that for it to happen whereas for the fact that the super league comes out and even the managers and some of the executives didn't even know it was happening until it comes out in the news that's where it becomes like you know it's it's the owners the ceos yeah Yeah. And, and it has been proven in the news that you know these people or the owners a lot of them are american a lot of them wanted to turn the Super League into this, you know, like franchise, like the NFL, yeah. uh, the was it the the MSL, um, yeah. where it's you know you have sponsors, you've got crap load of money coming in, um, yeah. and it just turns into this big like advertisement. It's not about the teams anymore. It's about who's willing to pay the most amount of money yeah. to have their brand or their name on a football shirt. Yeah, no, he was um it was Pep Guardiola that said it. Yeah, I've got a quote somewhere. Um, 
he said that the Super League wouldn't be sport because sport requires there to be, you know, a consequence if you lose. And, and no he said for Man City, yeah. there's, there's, no other things. there's no consequences if they lose the founding clubs because they can't get relegated. They can't leave yeah. the competition. They're stuck there. If they lose every game, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter it's if like they all... come 20th out of, or 10th out of 10th in those groups. It's, you know, exactly as, you yeah. know, it just it's like, oh no, we, we lost the game 5-1, but we still just made 10 million. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Yeah. Like, you're, you're just playing for the sake of Playing for winning. money. Well, not, yeah. not even winning money, just, just getting money yeah. for doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. I think that's probably my favourite quote out of all of this stuff that's gone, and that one Pep got it a quote, but there is, like, sport requires there to be consequence, and there's no consequence in this thing that they're proposing, mm-hmm. and that's probably my favourite quote out of all of it. Because I... I, I, I Avidly love Pep Guardiola, although he's manager of Man City. He's, you know, he's I, I love him. Arguably he's the best thing a... about City at the moment. <laughs> oh, he's the best thing yeah, about English yeah. football at the moment. Just having a manager and a person of his grace and quality involved in the English Premier League is just a blessing in itself. How dare you yeah. slander the name of Ryan Mason in such way? A hundred percent win record. A final in his second game in charge. How how dare you? <laughs> a final which he did no part in getting to as well, may I add. <laughs> oh, we're going to win. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Well, to be honest, I can see you winning. I think City are starting to flop a bit. But, um, I fucking hope so. <laughs> it'd be funny if they did. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. I can't, I, we I, sack I, Mourinho the next two games after we win a fucking trophy. <laughs> It's going to be Di Matteo all over again, like it was for Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Sack on Juventus, but Di Matteo comes in, wins the Champions League. He's going to come in, and Ryan Mason's going to get you Champions League qualification yeah. and win you the Carabao Cup. There you go. Speaking of Mourinho's absence, lots of the topic of it. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of spe- speculation as to why it was done now instead of like next week. All legal Perfect stuff. Timing. All legal stuff. Because if really. we win the league, if we win the fucking cup next week, we can't fire him without there being a legal battle. And he, he, get, he gets paid more. Yeah. Probably. Fucking millions more. Like yeah. he still well, got. It wasn't, what was his packet for getting his 16, 17 mil, I want to say. Yeah. Which is stupid money. Yeah, yeah so he's still uh, 17 million pounds up. For, right. for context, I have minus 14 in my bank account right now. <laughs> for minus 15 million, jeez. No, just minus 14. Wow. You got one minute. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, it, that would have gone up to easily 24, 25 mil, an extra nine. Yeah. Just for winning a cup. Yeah. It would have been a lot. Mm-hmm. Bear in mind, it's the shittest club that, cup that any English team can win. So. Uh, I don't like people that have that sort of attitude about it. I think it's still. A I think it's still a. I think it's still a very worthy competition. But when the final is two top Premier League clubs, I think it's a little bit boring. Yeah, I get that. I mean, even. But either way, it's it's basically just the for you uh, the same as the FA Cup, except the competition is a little bit bigger in the aspect of the it. Yeah. You know takes longer to complete um and there's just the less money prize pot at the end of it the mm-hmm. fa cup just gives more money basically so i have thought this for a while and i've asked a few of my friends like outside of which like what to think of this should there be a wage cap on your starting team in the league cup no, oh, because would, the, the, the main thing which people have problems with is the big teams not playing their strongest squad in the cup, and that would just force that to happen. Yeah, that's fair. But then mm. you then you get what was it? I'm not going to use Marine as an example because that was a great game, and even the Marine players enjoyed it. But say, who was it? Chelsea played this year, and you absolutely slapped them. It was like oh, it was or something. a championship. It was, yeah, it was a championship team. It wasn't even a League One or Two team. It was a championship team. We beat like seven one, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like with a very weak squad as well, which is the even worse. It was Wickham, it. wasn't it? I think it might have been Wickham. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, a lower down championship I think... team, but still a championship team. Yeah. Like, 
n newly Yeah, because if, if you're well. putting a cap on money, then you're essentially putting a cap on abilities. Yeah, and, that's and people will be like, okay, I'm just things. gonna, I'm just gonna be slightly worse, get a place <clears> on the <throat> the starting team. Yeah. I don't think players would think like that though. Like, yeah, but imagine you were really good and you had a great salary, and they were like, "Yeah, sorry, um, we can't put you on the starting team because you're actually too good." Well, the the logic behind that just seems. But sorry. for the league yeah. cup, though, like I, I'm on yeah, the, I'm, I am on the fence about it. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's. I think a good way to go about. Well, it. Yeah, I don't know. I think any player that loves playing football and loves the club that they play for would be happy to play in any competition yeah whether it's the carabao cup or the fa cup or the champions league they'll be happy with any of them like pep guardiola is the main aspect of it he's won the carabao cup before he still treats that exactly the same as what he would treat the premier league the fa cup and mm -hmm. the champions league because he sees it as a trophy and it's a worthy trophy it's one of the top trophies in england and that's why he still treats it the same which is the oh, right I'm way to go about yeah. it in my opinion so I don't think there should be a thing going in. Like, say if like the semi-final is Tottenham versus Accrington Stanley, and Tottenham put out a weak team, and Accrington Stanley beat them, there will then be the claim that Accrington Stanley only won because Tottenham put out a weak team. Yeah. It won't be oh Accrington Stanley beat Tottenham. It will be yeah, but they put out a weak team. So you know what I mean? Yeah, and it taints stuff in the same way that say was it Wigan twenty twelve only got through to the final because whoever they played in the semi-final literally put out a C team. Yeah. They were rusty, I think they, yeah. Who did they lose to in the final? I think it was C, wasn't it? Because C won the double that year, didn't they? They won the Premier we League. Can the... Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. I think it was 4-0 to C or something in the final, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't Wigan, it was somebody else. Wigan won the FA that year. Oh, Wigan won the FA that year. We can yeah, won something that year, they... right? No, they 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 won the FA, didn't they? Did they? What am I thinking of there? Let me. Have a quick... They they beat City one 0 right? Something like that. Uh, yeah. Yes. I don't know if it was the final. Oh, it was so. Sean. Yeah, it was Sean Maloney that scored the goal. I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they won the FA Cup. Uh, yeah, but Roberto Martinez was the manager at the time. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Massive glow up, by the way. Manager of Belgium now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you went from Wigan to Wigan Everton. Athletic. Wigan to Everton to Belgium. So it's a yeah. pretty good glow up. <laughs> yeah. Well, rankings wise, the best team in the world internationally. Mm -hmm. Does anyone remember when he used to play for Wigan? I remember Sean Maloney. I was gonna. No, I was gonna say. Uh, his name more than Gamers Pedersen, but he was Blackburn, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the lineup that beat Man City, and I, I couldn't tell you who any of them are. Had those Irish center back, the center back, didn't you? Yeah. Was his name Burke or something like that? Burn, Burn, that was it, yeah, yeah. Um, a few decent players to be honest, they weren't bad, it was just there's a team in the whole they didn't have the strength to compete in the Premier League, really. That's what it was. Yeah. It was just that year they had a miraculous FA Cup run. Because <laughs> I think they got relegated, didn't they, as well? Mm -hmm. That same year. I think they come bottom of the league or something and they won the FA Cup at the same time. I don't even think they were in the Championship or anything. They were like League Two. No, they were in the Prem. Oh, yeah, they were in the Prem. They got relegated. They came 18th. Sorry, I have it up now. League yeah. Cup, they came fourth. They finished in the fourth round. Yeah. Did they knock? Uh, did they knock Arsenal out? No, Blackburn locked Arsenal out. Never mind. It was the 2012-2013 series. I'm looking at it now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Uh, buh, 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 buh. League Cup. FA Cup. Yeah, they won one nil in the final against City. It was Maloney who scored the goal, wasn't it? No, Rob, uh, Watson. Ben Watson. Watson. Oh, Ben Watson. Oh, what a player he was. Maloney, player. Maloney scored in the semi-final against Millwall. To get through. Oh, okay. But the run to get through. So they beat Bournemouth 
Huddersfield, who were semi decent at that time, I'm pretty sure. I think Hudd- was Huddersfield in the Premier at that point, or was that later on? It was later on. But Bournemouth then... weren't in the Premier at that point. No, but so both Bournemouth. Like one, I think. No, I think both Bournemouth and Huddersfield were contending high in the Championship at that point, weren't they? But they also beat Bournemouth. Ever- didn't. Yeah, they beat Everton three 0 and Melwall two 0 in the run up. Still face some decent teams. Yeah, like... and in the uh, League Cup, they beat West Ham four one in that run that year as well. Like they had a decent team. Hmm. Oh well, they had a team that played well. They did not do well in the league. Of course, they beat Tottenham one 0 Yeah, Tottenham sure. Uh... Um, <laughs> fuck you. That was also the year that we knocked you out of the Champions League place. Yep. Um, yep. Because uh, Chelsea did the miraculous thing of winning the, winning the Champions League mm-hmm. and finishing sixth, which forced the Premier League to change the ruling of the Champions League qualification. Yeah. Didn't it? Oh. Because it was very unfair. Their unfair. top scorer that year was Aruna Kone. Who remembers oh, that player? Aruna Kone. Aruna Kone. Oh, what a player. Aruna Kone, Jordi Gomez, and. Callum Jordy McManaman. Gomez, yeah. oh, he, I generally, he's one of the most hated players I think yeah. I've ever. Just, I hate him. He's just such a dirty prick. I think he's playing the championship. They the had moment. Franco De Santo as well. Jeez, I didn't know that. Yeah. Then came on to be one of the best yeah. strikers in the Bundesliga for a little while after that. Went to uh, Schalke, didn't he? Both of the James McArthurs. Uh-huh. Um, James McCarthy. Uh... Now at Everton, MacArthur mm-hmm. now at Crystal Palace. Who else did they have? They had, yeah, they did have Victor Moses. Ollie's right; they had Victor Moses that yeah. year. Um, obviously, then became one of the most crucial parts of our Premier League team for a little while, didn't he? Yes. After that, Jean I think it was Boyer's Jour, I think is how you pronounce it. Jean Boyer's Jour. I'm. I'm. Oh, it's like a French surname. It was a, is a Chilean player. Chilean player. I know. Oh, I know who you're on about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ! They had Joel Robles and Ali Al Habsi as their goalkeeper for most of the season. Yeah. Who does Joel Robles play for now? Is it Everton? I think so. Jeez. And then Al Al-Habsi, Habsi went to Watford, didn't he? After that. I think. Yes. Yeah. And they had is. I think it was Yap Sam's son, Ronnie Stam. I might be wrong, and there uh, just might be another Stam. <laughs> Probably just another Stam. Might just be another Stam. I'll have a look. Yeah. Uh, but they had uh, <laughs> Antolin Alcatraz as the defender as well. Who yeah, was remember him. Fucking amazing. Yeah, he was a fucking rock. And he was. Gary Caldwell. Gary Caldwell, that's who I'm. Trying to think of centre back wise. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he plays for uh, fucking Joel Robles plays for Real Betis now. Okay, yeah. And is Ronnie Stam, Yap Sam's son, is the thing I'm looking. Someone go on to another topic, please. <laughs> Let's look at this. Well, I mean, one of the topics you wanted to go on to was Jesse Lingard, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. What a season he's having. <laughs> yeah, well, half season. Half season. We'll give him it. He's doing better than most players have done in the whole season in half a season. Oh, yeah. Uh, good runner form, or just he's actually a class player? Yeah, he is. He's showing his true qualities. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, one of the things we were going to talk about is does he deserve to be in the England team? Um, I think form wise he does. I genuinely genuinely think he does. He's just all right I know I I know you disagree. Yeah. Because God, remember this is the tournament that was meant to happen last year. And obviously it didn't because of COVID. I think that's um, a really bad way to look at it though. You you choose no, the know, players that are in form at the moment. But do you look at the players that have been in form for the past two years in in Jesse Lingard's position? Yeah, sure. You've got uh, Mason Mount, James Madison, yep. Jack Grealish. So James Madison James Sancho might... Sancho plays in that same position. Madison might miss out because of disciplinary reasons. Yeah. Because of his um, COVID breach. Yeah. Um, but, so if you take out James Madison, you've still got Mount, Grealish, Grealish still James injured. Sancho, 
Sterling that can play in that position. Okay, so in the sake of oh, yeah. Sterling and Grealish, they're both currently injured and are not unavailable, but on their unknowns for the England team. Yeah, and this is probably the most hurtful thing I'm going to say about any Chelsea player, but someone who I think deserves it more than Mason Mount, Phil Foden. Oh, no, yeah, Phil Foden like, deserves to be in the team. He is in the team, if, isn't he? Yeah, if any of those players... Get in ahead yeah, of Phil Foden. Don't, don't, yeah. don't get... Well, no, even just if any of those players miss out to Jesse Lingard, it'll be an absolute mockery of the sport if they're fully fit. And the selection committee. Because I Jesse Lingard would, doesn't deserve it. I would accept either Sterling and Grealish not being in the squad if... They haven't had the game time prior to this tournament. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I get what you mean. Sterling has been out for quite a while now. He's getting back into the game, but it's not been great. Mm. Grealish has been out for at least a month and a half now. And has had the problems with his injury before. And it's always taken him a while to get back into it. Yeah. Do you trust those players out in front when you know you've got someone who's very informed and has literally been the player of the Premier uh, League in those past few months. I would say Raheem Sterling, yes. Jack Grealish, maybe not, but Raheem Sterling has I disregarding honestly, Harry Kane, probably been the best player for England over the past few years. How dare you forget about T-Rex? T-Rex? <laughs> T-Rex. <laughs> and uh, John Pickford. <laughs> oh, oh no, God. <laughs> Jordan oh. Pickford, I don't know how he keeps him getting the number one spot. Yeah, another good, <laughs> another good point for us all is who do we think should be number one? Nick Pope. Nick Pope. Uh, ben, who do you think? Do you no, I, I, he doesn't <laughs> give I'm a shit because he's Norwegian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben, who do you think should be the Norwegian number one? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, know I, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I know, I know Odegaard <laughs> from your, yeah, your that's team. Yeah, you're, you're missing out with one massive one. Here, Haaland. There we go. And Hoiberg. Yeah. Those are the three that I know. There's also the Southampton defender. What's his name? Vestergaard. Vestergaard, yeah, that's it. Yeah. See, we yeah. know players. <laughs> Some of them. Some of them. I know players, I just don't know their nationalities half yeah. the time. Norway's always a weird one because I always just get it confused with Denmark. So I was about to say yeah. fucking. What's... Christian Eriksen. No, let's go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Schmeichel. Schmeichel. I was going to say Schmeichel. Schmeichel, I was, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, no, wait, that's definitely Denmark. <laughs> Interesting fact, by the way. I know I've said it to you two in the past, but I've never said it on the podcast. Casper Schmeichel and Peter Schmeichel, there's a common thing here. Peter Schmeichel won his first Premier League title with Manchester United at the age of 29 as a goalkeeper. Cashbridge Michael won his first Premier League title with Leicester City at the age of 29. There you go. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Crazy. Father Smart. and son winning the Premier League for the first time at the same age. Yeah, Still fun fact. Obviously both being goalkeepers as well. Peter Michael being one of the best he's ever been. And um, both not winning against again after that. <laughs> Oh no, Peter Schmeichel won it again after that. Did he? He was the goalkeeper for Man United, mate. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they... Was it not just the one who won Alex Fo- No, No, Michael no, was... they swapped to Van der Sar the next time they won, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure Peter Schmeichel won more than one Premier League title. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> fairly sure. Carry on with the conversation about Jesse Lingard and the England squad. Uh... uh... Ben, who do you think deserves to be in England squad? Out of whom? Just anyone. Let's see how many players you can name. Oh, God. Dude, oh, this is really fun. I like this. I like video. this. <laughs> this, is, this is not going to be a fun part of the podcast. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, you've really put me on the spot here, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, g- give me a list of, like, defenders, midfielders, strikers, and I'll tell you which ones. I think. Okay. Based, so our out strikers. Of, based off of my knowledge of them. and uh... Our strikers is a good one, actually, because there's quite a big debate about strikers as well at the moment, isn't there? Um, so you got Harry Kane, obviously, he's mm-hmm. going to be in the new team. He's captain and whatever. Yeah. Although I don't think he should be captain, but, you know. Um, 
Oh lord, I, I was very wrong. He won five Premier Leagues. I think he's just going to say that. Yeah, he's, he's literally one of the best goalkeepers to ever be. He's definitely won more than one Premier League title. Um, so yeah, you've got Harry Kane. Uh, you could choose between Callum Wilson, Ollie Watkins, Danny oh. Ings. You, you've left um, out the main one. <laughs> Calvert Lewin. Who? Oh yeah, we're all getting onto it. There's, there's a few. That's the whole point. Well, this uh, this just shows how outdated I am from English football now because I literally have never heard any of those players. It's like where have they even come from? Has it been that long? Never since? heard of Danny Ings. No, I've heard. I was going to say I've heard of Danny Ings and obviously Harry Kane, okay. but the, these new and up and coming ones. So. Ollie Watkins is a new and up and coming one. He's only been in the Premier yeah. League this year. So how how old um, are these players? But Ollie, Watkins, Ollie Watkins, I'm pretty sure, is like, like twenty one. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Danny Ings is about twenty seven. Uh, Cavalier's 24? Yeah, Cavalier's like 23, 24. He's more closer to mine and Aaron's age than yours. Yeah. Yeah. But they can't have been playing for, for long for me to have not known them. Calvert Lewin really Calvin been, yeah, blew he's up been last year. While. Yeah. Right. Oh, there you go, uh, Jazz. Put yeah. in a thing. Peter Schmeichel left Man United for sporting uh, in the same year. Uh, which would United won the treble in ninety nine. Mm -hmm. There you go. How glad are we all that City are not gonna win the quad this year? You're welcome. I'm so Tell happy. <laughs> I I've never cheered for Chelsea before in a game. As a Chelsea fan, you're welcome. <laughs> I've never cheered for Chelsea before in a game, and it hurt me to do so. But oh, it had oh, to it be was done. An amazing performance, wasn't it though? Oh, it was such an awful game. It was the the it first, was no, it was the the first worst time game. That Man City have been shut up, as in that they haven't really had anything going forward. Yeah, it was the first time that has happened. It, 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 I think it's probably anything, the first times in the, the only time season anything where they happened. haven't had more possession. The only time anything happened was when Foden got subbed on. Yeah, and even then he was being shut out. Yeah. He made Foden's quality. I yeah. Don't think there's uh, like it pains me to say, but I think that he's, that he's even better than Mason Mount as in promising talent wise. Oh, I hundred percent think he's going to be yeah. the next like messy type player. Yeah. Like it's just his skill on the ball is just ridiculous. Like, like have you seen quick. his stats lined up with Messi's at the same age? No. He blows Messi out the water, I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. It's like I know he's different criticized leagues, by but... everyone. Yeah. For my fantasy Premier League team at the start of the year, I got criticized by all the people in my league for putting Phil Foden in my team. They are fucking ruining that decision to not put him in the team now. Because he's getting me so many points. <laughs> Admittedly I haven't changed it since December. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of he's fantasy, I me. I think I'm like at the top of my league, which I'm loving. I know I'm bottom of all of mine, but I still have Phil Foden getting those points. It's mainly because I've had Team of Werner as my captain mm -hmm. uh, since December. Yeah. Um, which if any of you follow football, you'll know that's not a good decision. No. Um, so I, I guess to end off the football talk, uh, Champions yes. League and Europa League spots for the season? Uh, obviously, City are going to win the league. It's, yeah. If, it's, they, it's if they don't, if they don't no then there's, there's a massive flop. Um, How many points have they had by now? Like, 10 I think they're still no. I think it's sixteen-ish. I think no really? points they're ahead now. Yeah, uh, it um, is fifteen. No wait, that's, that's the wrong thing. It's eleven. Oh, it's eleven. Okay. Uh, United have a game in hand though. Oh, okay. Um, but even then, they're not gonna. <laughs> I think yeah. United are gonna start falling down again. Mm -hmm. Um. This is that sort of time of year where they start to fall down a bit. Yeah. Um, Leicester have a really, really tough run of games. Yeah. I think Leicester can put it out of the bag. I think it'll be City winning the league. Mm -hmm. But the, the, I'm just going to say, when all the points between, uh, let's say, like eighth, ninth, so Everton, and third, Leicester, there's only like six points in it. Yeah, it's very tight. It's yeah, very, so it's going to change very quickly. <clears throat> I think that we're going to come through and finish in second because I don't see many teams beating us. We had our blip against West Brom 
But yeah. if anything, that's made us stronger since then. I mean, who, like you look at our defense who are now. your remaining games against? You've got we've got Leicester West Ham. Up, I know that. You've, you've got, got West, West Ham, Ham this weekend. Then you have. And if we win that, that puts a massive statement on the fact that we your did get your top big four. game is the one against City. I yeah. Think. It's West Ham and City that are the games that are key games for us. Ooh, and Arsenal. Ah, oh, fuck Arsenal. Arsenal yeah. and Leicester can give you a run. Those are your last two games of the season. <sighs> I don't think they're, Arsenal will do anything towards they're us. They're three days apart, though. Yeah, I don't. I still don't see Arsenal as a threat. Um, I, I, I haven't seen Arsenal as a threat in the past few years. Oh, and yeah, your, your, your last game is against Villa. But... Sorry, your last game is against Villa. You, yeah, I think... You've not got an easy run of games. No, but I think we will get top four. I think it'll be Man City, Chelsea, I think Leicester, and then maybe West Ham. It'll be a toss-up between West Ham and Man United. And then Europa League will be like West Ham or Man United, and then probably Liverpool. If you beat West Ham tomorrow, is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. If you beat West Ham tomorrow, I don't think we Tottenham and Liverpool still have a chance at uh, Champions League. Yeah, I. Yeah, yeah we, it's going to be a very tight points, game tomorrow. Points they can, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can. I just. I can't see West. I, I just. I know Jesse Lingard's in good form and Antonio's playing well, but I just can't see them breaking down our defense. Yeah. Also, I mean, if if Phil Foden, De Bruyne, and that can't do it, how how can we expect them to do it? Hundred percent. I also believe Arsenal Everton still nil nil, as of the time of recording. Uh, yeah, I haven't had any notifications come through. Yeah, so, so both yeah. shit teams. Everton can only win to go VAR overturned a penalty. Yeah, for I mean, uh, Arsenal. Everton can only win a match by tripping up over their own feet. Mm-hmm. Not sure if yeah. anyone saw that against Spurs, but Hammers Rodriguez is a dirty cunt. Oh yeah, years. Yeah. We've all known that. Uh, I've for a good few years. But Go yeah. on, Aaron, what's your top six? Uh, top six. First, City. Second, I, I, I don't see United moving from it with seven points. Uh, yeah. I think they're staying there. I then think... I think, I think Chelsea is going to contend with third. Yeah. But I don't think I they're going to get enough room. honestly think third Chelsea, fourth, fourth either Tottenham or Leicester. I'm going to say Leicester because I don't think Tottenham can pull it out of the bag. It depends how well this weekend goes. Mm-hmm. So that's fourth, fourth and fifth. Tottenham and Liverpool are on. And then sixth, Liverpool. Liverpool, right. has, Liverpool, has a, Liverpool has a game in hand on Tottenham and they're on the same points. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like, mm. But Liverpool have also only won one of their last like seven games. Mm-hmm. No, so. they won the past, in, in the past five games they won they three. won three, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but they've, not they've, the they've drawn recently. and lost a lot as well. Like they they've yeah. flopped, and they don't. Well, have... they went on a they went on a five game losing streak, didn't they? Yeah. The first time they've done it in their history. After uh, the largest winning streak. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. overall, Tottenham have lost more games. So. Yeah. It's because Tottenham have massively slumped recently as well. That's why. I think Tottenham and Liverpool at the same time. We, we did it two seasons ago. Down. A new manager, and we literally won every game for four weeks. It's yeah, it's the new manager yeah. thing that happens every time it happens at a club. Look at us with Tuchel at the moment. We're still in our honeymoon phase with Tuchel. We've mm-hmm. lost against West Brom. We lost against Porto. But really, that game against Porto, we just didn't want to yeah. lose. And... Like the actual tie, we didn't care if we lost it one 0 because we wouldn't lose. Right? And. Because so many of Tottenham's current team did play for Spurs during Ryan Mason's injury, I think they're going to play for him more than people think they might. So, I know Kane was in the squad, Ben Davies was in the squad. I believe Lamella and that class was in the squad. Lloris was definitely there. Alderweireld was on the cusp, and I know Davies was as well, but no of the injury. But yeah. yeah, the youngest manager to ever play in the Premier League, the younger manager ever to win the, in a game in the Premier League. I think we should. I think Spurs should stick with Ryan Mason for a while. I mean, well, is every record about youngest is going to get broken in it? 
because yeah. he is the youngest ever manager that's gonna that's been in the Premier League. So mm-hmm. youngest manager to lose? Ooh. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is where he goes on a ten-year unbeaten streak as Tottenham manager. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I would love it. <laughs> Uh, uh, we yeah, just wait. We had that hope of Frank Lampard, and look what happened with that. Speaking of losses to my life, uh, under thirties, we've we've been shafted in the UK. Under Essentially, he's been shafted. Uh, we're clarifying that we're not talking about football anymore. We are not talking yes. about football anymore. We're we not are talking about football anymore. Officially moving off of football. Uh, an hour yes. and ten minutes into the podcast, I'm fine. <laughs> uh. Under 30s have been told that we are not allowed to take the AstraZeneca vaccine in the UK, which is arguably the best vaccine. Anyone going to disagree with me there? I've, I mean, I haven't looked into it too much. I so. have, I have, yeah, I have the housemate that does the vaccines. I've, I've heard the inside scoops. Because <laughs> you don't know, my housemate works in vaccines and administers them to thousands of people a week. <laughs> but David, yeah. Uh, Big man, David. So, the under under 30s in the UK now have to take, we believe, the Oxford vaccine. We are unsure if that is correct. I don't well, think anything yeah, has been released. Really found an article yeah. from The Guardian saying that you're going to be given the Pfizer or the Moderna. Okay. So, Pfizer because Moderna. the Oxford and Astra- AstraZeneca um, were linked to cases of blood clotting. Yeah, so it's a 0.004% chance of a blood clot. Yeah. Um, for a much cheaper, much more effective vaccine, I'm not sure about you, Dalton, but I would take the risk. <laughs> I would take the risk as well. Yeah. Uh, in questions of what that means for over thirties, I think you're still going to receive the whatever vaccine is available at your local vaccine clinic. So if. Yeah. Everyone at your local vaccine clinic has already been taking the AstraZeneca. If you're over 30, you're going to continue taking the AstraZeneca until you, that clinic runs out of AstraZeneca. Even though they're still supplying it to the UK. So it's a bit of a grey area at the moment. And I mean, it is important to say that it is a very rare case of blood clotting. It's not like everyone that's received the AstraZeneca is, is seeing symptoms of that. Yeah. So, 0.0004, I'm going to reiterate again, is the percentage chance of getting a blood clot from this. To put that so, basically, t- you're guaranteed to get a blood clot, as well, by the government is saying. I mean, yeah, to put it as a perspective for everyone, the, uh, the, the pill that is legal in the UK has a 1.2% chance of blood clot. <laughs> but that's illegal. <laughs> you can buy that right now. You can get yeah. it right now. If you fucking want to. <laughs> but, stupid. Yeah, I, I think it's the most stupid thing that the government has decided since COVID started and they've done a lot of stupid things. The oh, yeah. AstraZeneca vaccine has the least side effects and has is one of the cheapest to produce, I believe. <laughs> uh, and yeah. Uh and for people that are saying uh, David on the podcast, nah, he's a massive alcoholic. If you think I'm an alcoholic, he's an alcoholic. Friday nights are, <laughs> Friday nights are for him and his rum bottle. <laughs> and I'm only saying this because I know he's going to listen to this one because it's about football. Hi, David. Fuck Hi. you. <laughs> uh, Yeah, but yeah, same for the Johnson's vaccine that was put on hold from uh, production because women, for other health issues, also had blood clots. But really, the there's... Johnson's is US, isn't it? Yeah, Johnson's is the US. I'm doing that here. They were right. they were going to bring it in, but then the blood clot one warning meant they didn't. I believe. Gotcha. Uh, in terms of like. I, th- I think it's stupid. I don't, it's just it's the only it's the only emotion I can feel right now. It's it's, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. For the UK, when do they plan on, like your age group, for example, Aaron and Dalton? When do they plan on uh, getting you vaccinated? Never. <laughs> ah, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, the UK government 
uh, don't quote me on this, is still in the uh, is it herd immunity stage of the vaccine. So we'll give the vaccine to a bunch of people and everybody else can kill themselves off. Me and Dalton are in the stage of kill ourselves off because we don't have asthma or any underlying health issues. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to be killed off by COVID, by the way. I'm going to get killed off by pure alcoholism. I'm Um, going to get killed off by Kraken. (laughs) I think Peroni and San Miguel will be the death of me. That's a good run. (laughs) It's a good run, yeah. (laughs) It is a good one. But I was the bit of my last stream. My water bottle is now an empty bottle of Kraken because I've I've lost my <laughs> I love the Kraken bottles, by the way. Mm-hmm. They're, nice. They're very easy to hold. <laughs> yes. They're very easy to pour out of as well when you're doing like pouring of Oh, it's so good. Measures and that in pubs because you can just grab the little hooks and mm-hmm. just Yeah. It's very good. I'll get off the. I'll get off bar stuff. <laughs> I mean, bar stuff's good. We, I think, one episode of the podcast will be entirely on bar stuff. At one point, with two of us being bartenders and us probably being able to get a, a guest as a bartender. Um, and the third one, drinking all the time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. I mean, I know it looks like Ben's just been sipping out of his water bottle this entire time, just drinking water. Now nah, straight vodka. I. I secretly fill up my sprite cup with uh with pure rum. Hundred <laughs> percent proof. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's that that's not good. <laughs> that would destroy your liver very quickly. Yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, but another thing that had to be said by the vaccines. Literally, I think it was a week and a half ago. A so. For those of you that are unaware about religions and stuff, Muslims are currently fasting because of Ramadan. Is that the best way to describe that? Um, Health ministers from the Muslim Association of England have to come out and say, take the vaccines, dum-dums. Don't... Because they were refusing to. They were refusing to because they thought it would go against Ramadan, but where vaccines have no nutritional value. Welcome to my TED Talk. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh my god our, people are our stupid <laughs> all of the, uh, the Muslims out there anyone in our, our community I think it was more the old older generation that they had it was, it was, a, it was a lot of it. it was a lot of 20 to 30 year olds that were having really? to have it because of underlying health <laughs> issues I was like no I was like you were literally the people that need it <laughs> fucking have it <laughs> uh but yeah. Yeah, people are stupid. People are stupid. Uh, I know a lot of uh, anti vax from churches and stuff as well because they think, oh, it's they not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not blood and body, so Jesus wouldn't have it. Why should we? I was like, fuck off. Jesus is a magician. He walked on water. You cannot walk on water. Fuck off. What I'm saying is Dynamo did that, so. Yeah, Dynamo's a magician. Are you a magician? Exactly. Dino Di- Di- is a cheat. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just and oh, the anti-vaxxer thing in the US, which girl has brought up is so oh, lordy. I could have an hour rant about that, but I won't. <laughs> I'm not really following it. I'm just trying to live my life yeah. without COVID for once. Well, you see, I work in a in a job where there's no work, so I I read the news a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's if it's true, but I saw on social media that the government is now classifying the state as not a pandemic. Uh, yeah, yeah, apparently we're not a pandemic anymore. anymore. Yeah. Not in a pandemic. Yeah, yeah, it's not a pandemic. Which is anymore. which is good news. It's not a pandemic. It's like a global crisis or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's an outbreak rather than yeah. a pandemic, I think. I Which is it in a different way. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's basically just wording it in a different way. Yeah. Oh, gee, hi. L kids. <laughs> uh Gee, you've got a nice present in the the, <laughs> in the pre- recordings. Podcast, uh for you to look at when you edit, by the way. India got thirty thousand th- three hundred thousand cases in one day. Yeah, but India yeah, has like is... India have like three million three people. billion people. They say it's one yeah. billion, but it's definitely more. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, in India's fucked. <laughs> uh, speaking of people getting fucked, uh, Derek, where are you taking this? Derek Chauv- oh, where, where is this going? <laughs> Derek Chauvin, aka Mister oh, yeah. Police Officer, that'll step on your neck because you can't breathe because you the stuff that isn't your fault. Yeah. I believe the Australians put it best. Ben, would do you like to? Tell us what the Australian... Oh, the, uh, the Australian media, how did they put it? It was, uh, murderer caught on video. Murdering has been sentenced as a murderer or something like that. I'll, I'll get it up, yeah. but they, uh, they really put it how it was. Yeah. So, um, those of you that don't know, Derek, Derek Chauvin, Derek, oh, I don't know how to say his last name. I think it's but, Chauvin. Uh, Chauvin, Chauvin, yeah. Uh, today he was sentenced for the murder. I think he was he had several charges. One of them was yeah. like manslaughter. Charged one of them murder was as well. first degree murder. Yep. Yeah. Uh but what I say to that is good fucking riddance. Yes. Yeah. I think it's a stepping stone in the right direction, but nothing has been fixed in the US. In the yeah. time between that happening and today not not the arrest, the actual incident involving George Floyd. Yeah, yeah. I believe it's more than two hundred police killings of people of color. Yeah. Whether whether that's wrongful or rightful, I think that's all wrongful as well. Because I I, I, I I'm not saying anything bad about Americans here. I'm just saying they all have guns. <laughs> One of the um, controversial things I saw, BBC News did an interview today with uh, an ex-policeman who was uh, of, of colour, and he, he brought up this controversial topic saying that actually they haven't really taken a huge step in the right direction in terms of like real life, it's just in terms of media and what people are seeing, because there's thousands of people every year, both of colour and people who are white who are being killed by police, but it was driven forward by the fact that um, the person killed was of colour and that's why the whole media thing took off and if someone of who was of white ethnicity had been killed in the same manner it wouldn't have actually taken off as much mm-hmm. so I thought that was quite an interesting that. point yeah because, I get where he's coming from yeah and I, I feel like he had a standpoint he, he was of colour he could say like look it kind of actually used being black as a way to propel the anger against the police at the same time yeah and a lot more needs to be done because you don't hear about a white guy being killed by police as much as you do a black yeah. person yeah it goes both ways yeah yeah so in terms of and i'm going to do this on massacres because that's how the internet portrays it in the uk since the start of the 21st century so 2000 onwards there have been one, two, three, four, five, six mass shootings or mass attacks. Two of those being on London Bridge, by the way. There just seems to be yeah. a hot spot. Just don't go there. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you like to guess how many since the start of the year there has been in the US? Probably hundreds. Over 100. 126 mass shootings. Since yeah. the start of the year, as of March 31st, so there's been 20, what, 23 extra days on top of that. Yeah. yeah. Where we yeah. know where we know there has been more, and there's only mass shootings, not even terrorist events or anything, which is what's included in the UK numbers. Yeah. What is wrong with your country? <laughs> there's something wrong. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think it's just laws in general, they're just different, aren't they? Uh, so, can I define mass? Yes, I can. Uh, so, in terms of mass shootings in the US, they are defining that as... Incident involving several victims of firearm-related violence. So, I believe more than five is several. In yeah, terms of that sounds war. about right. Uh, yeah. 126. Uh, if you want more of that, uh, 
is left more than 148 people dead and 481 injured. That is 629 victims, including the shooters as well. I'm going to add in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, in, in most scenarios, the, the shooter... Mm -hmm. or the, yeah, they don't the really come out very well, do they? No. It doesn't come out of that. Yeah. Like... Ayy... <laughs> Uh, Which I don't know if it's better or worse. Like, would you want the attacker to get off free by by letting them either shoot themselves or be killed? I know in some scenarios the the police will have to. Yeah, they will have to take ter terminate. Action, yeah. But when it comes to like the UK, you see a lot of people. They the way they deal with it, they detain them and they arrest them, and mm -hmm. it's a much better scenario. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to yeah. state now that there has not been a school shooting in the UK for a very long time, I think. We had the one in Scotland, didn't we? Uh, it was, well, not recent. Um, it was one that Andy Murray was, he was at, he was his school when, it, when he was a kid. Yeah. The one, the most recent one that I can remember. Was it honest. Lockerbie? Dunblane. Dunblane, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, that was almost 24 years ago. Yeah, yeah. was it 15 people died? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, 15 people were injured, 70 people died. Uh, yeah. Which is still considered one of the most deadlies. Yeah. So that's in 1996. Remember? Hmm. There's been three school shootings this year in America. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, again, not a topic we'd like to talk about, but it's no. mad, yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, I, it's you know, it's just I think it's mainly due to the laws of the mm -hmm. land in America, like just the gun yeah. laws are so different. Of like how you're able to wield a gun, that but like, room, like you know, when I went to Georgia to live for a little bit with uni, uh, we had to do shooting drills at the uni. What, what what do you do if someone comes in with yeah. a gun? I was like, I don't know, move back to the UK? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think that's very true, Ollie, and I think you're trying to make a joke out of that. There. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, is, looking yeah. at the comment, yeah, Kayla's right. Like The fact these... that you, when you go to school, you have to have these drills of what to do in case yeah. someone starts mm -hmm. shooting. I, I mean, was the whole so... subject of it, didn't they? In Thirteen Reasons Why. Yeah, I was so confused by it. Yeah. Oh yeah, the fucking end of the first series, wasn't it? The second, I think. Second, it was. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But they tackled the whole school shooting subject. I think the story of mental health could be a whole podcast in itself, which oh, would yeah. include Thirteen Reasons Why, because I know we've had a topic Dalton about talking about it already. Yeah. And Ben, have you watched it? I have not. Thirteen reasons why. It's on Netflix. There is three seasons, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Don't think I have, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll need to watch. Also, for anyone that is dealing with any mental health issue or wants to talk about mental health, I know my server is always open. There is mental health channels in there. They're barren at the moment, but. If you need anyone to talk to, either post in there, send any of us three a PM. I'm <laughs> sure either of us, any of us will be willing to talk. Yeah. And if you are, it doesn't make you weak to reach out. No, it doesn't at all. You're not weak by doing it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Ben, for going back to football, but I forgot this no, topic. Uh, Jesse Lingard, a player that's doing very well. We forgot to talk about this when we were talking about Jesse Lingard. Literally came yeah. out a few months ago saying that he was ready to quit football because of mental health his he and his family were uh not doing well with stuff um he was getting a lot of abuse for the way he's playing and stuff like that and he was like sitting on the bench all the time is not him and that's what he was doing at united he wants to go out that is one of the struggles of being yeah. in the face of the public 
Uh, thank you. I'm trying to deal with that. So yeah, I would like to point out Jack has just put yeah, thanks, buzz Jack, in for the review. Much. However, you know him has put lines in that you can call if you are struggling if you don't want to reach out to one of us or anybody like friends and whatever. There, yeah, yeah. Very there are numbers there you can call. Putting those out. Um, Lingard's mum had her own mental health problems in the past and throughout now, I believe. Um, and he tried to help her, but in doing so, he had to bottle up his own stuff, which speaks volumes with me because I've something I've mm -hmm. had to, I've had to do in the past. I'm pretty sure Dalton's yeah. had to do it in the past as well. Same. Um, but then goes back to saying, even going to the gym is something you can do to help with it. Like, yeah. I know for me, football was an escape. Oh, like yeah. playing football, watching football. Anything, that, any form of physical exercise helps. Yeah. It because it's all about getting the endorphins out and they release them, you know. Mm -hmm. Gives gives you a happy energy of sorts, really, when you're doing that sort of thing. 100%. Um, to not end on a negative note, Ben, do we have any questions from chat? As as we have about um, five minutes left. No, everything from chat was related to Super League and we pretty much covered it all. Fair. I believe I have a question from... Do you want to cover Charlotte's questions now, or do you want to do it in a later one? I will, we'll do that in a later one, yeah. That is fair. Be fine. But uh, if anyone is watching from both Twitch and YouTube, feel free to send us your questions regarding any sort of topic that we can cover. Mm -hmm. We have a link in the description below where you can fill out a form of either um, questions for us, or if you have any sort of opinions on ways to make the podcast better, for uh, for you guys, the listeners, then feel free to send us in. It is completely anonymous. You can put your name on there as well if you would like to. Um, but yeah, make sure you do that for uh, for the next podcast, and we'll read through them. I'm just having a quick scroll through chat to see if there's anything. Um. Oh, here's something that I would like. I'm going to talk about football again because I like football. <laughs> So, soccer or football? What do you think of the whole American scene of football? I really like the way they do it. It's a bit different. What is in the MLS? As, yeah, the MLS, like their way of doing it. Like, what do you mean their way of doing it? So, do you, are you aware of like the drafting and the yeah. transfer regulations they have on players and stuff? It's very different from the rest of the world. If you are not aware of it, I would definitely rec. If you and you're interested in football, I definitely recommend having a look because I think it's a very interesting way of doing sports. If you play Football Manager, I would definitely recommend if you have the time doing an MLS save. It's hilariously fun. <laughs> I think is the best way to describe it. <clears throat> uh, me taking Toronto to be fucking the powerhouse of the world somehow. Yeah, again, going back to like how the whole Super League started, like I think the f not the format of it, but more the politics of it is run. It's I don't deep. agree with yeah. you know how it's it's all like it's franchising, it's getting sponsorships. I, I mean, I know Premier League has sponsorships, but uh, how do I say this? They're not. It's all about it's all about the money. Face, yeah, 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 it's yeah. yeah. It's like oh, this this corner. I saw them like a meme on. Twitter or whatever, this corner is sponsored by McDonald's or some shit like that. It's yeah. just everything becomes so political and so money driven rather than yeah. the football is for the fans. Yeah. I mean, how. I, 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 don't, I haven't researched the MLS enough for me to make a. Yeah, neither have I. On it. Yeah. I can't really I'm, comment on it. Maybe a topic for off stream, but I think even. The Premier League has to come out and say legal spacing for sponsors. You're allowed three on our top, right? One front face, one left sleeve, one on your back. If yep. I'm not mistaken. Yes, I believe mm -hmm. so. Uh, so you got United with Chevrolet on the front. I know that's changing soon. And then you got like sleeve sponsors like Angry Birds. Who's Angry Birds? Is that City? I don't know. I know someone has no, isn't it Best Fiends. Best Fiends is Norwich, isn't it? Yeah. 
I know that. And just like the fact that fucking mobile games are sponsoring football teams is stupid. Mobile games are conquering the world. And then you get fucking amazing marketing teams. Who is it that Burger King sponsors? I have no idea. Sponsor someone. Yeah, they do. I can't remember who it is it is. Steven H F C. So they're now the most played uh, team. Yeah, this was genius stuff. So the they're the most played team on FIFA 2021 uh, for uh, career mode. They're the, the fifth most used kit in uh, Ultimate Team. Oh, wow. That is amazing Absolute marketing. Genius. Stevenage. Probably so one, it cost them next to nothing because it was Stevenage and you know you're not mm -hmm. paying for a top tier team but they're still in the premier uh, in the um in the game yeah league in the game i believe league yeah. 2 they're in league, league 2 or something yeah sorry i didn't know which league they're in but it's absolute genius yeah yeah at the uh, time just put that at the time, in birds, by the way yeah i i thought it was okay uh man united's next sponsor is zoom i really hope that's not so cuz zoom is about to die <laughs> so now that the pandemic's over, Ashland, they're not going to go yeah. very well. Um, but yeah, I, I remember now. At the time, Bird King sponsored the lowest ranked team in England. I believe they're still yeah. in League 2 at the moment. But American companies didn't know about anything lower than League 2. <laughs> because. I mean, not many people do, to no. be fair. So. <laughs> Banorama and all. <laughs> I do. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but you, it kind of has to be like a more local thing for you. Yeah. To... Well, it's because, well, yeah. And just gonna, one day, for, one day for me, it's football manager. I, I know. Of, yeah. One day. One we day. keep getting so close. We keep getting so close. <laughs> and then we just flop. <laughs> one, day. one day. We're two promotions away. <laughs> so close. We got to one promotion away and then flopped. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I believe that's the end of this episode. Yeah, we're coming down to I the end. We've covered everything, yeah? Again, we... I think we want to reiterate, sorry that the last few weeks have been a bit scuffed is because of either one of us has been away or other things work and everything like that yes yeah we are going to try to keep it to once every two weeks but in the future there may be pre-recorded episodes that we all just post on youtube and one of us will stream on the friday instead and direct you all to the youtube so you can go watch it yeah obviously once you finish watching our streams <laughs> <laughs> um, and if they're not pre-recorded they might just be a week late or a week early or a day late or a day early we will let you know on our discord channels I believe everyone is a part of those already and if you are watching from YouTube right now then uh, feel free to check out the description we'll have all of the discords and twitches linked up as well as the link to the uh, questionnaire sheet where you can fill out questions for us to answer in the following stream. I definitely haven't forgot to put that questionnaire sheet in any of the videos so far. I have put it in. Don't Thank worry. you. <laughs> <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. It is there. And, uh, and if you would like to subscribe, that would be awesome. Obviously on YouTube, it's completely free. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers at the moment as our current goal. Feel free to uh, share the channel with your friends, people who are interested in and all the things that you are as well. We uh, we talk about everything and anything. So do not limit your questions. Feel free to ask us whatever you like. Yes. Uh, I guess we could open this up to chat. Does anyone?